Cube. News and analysis from Big Data SV2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors Actian, Accelerating Big Data 2.0, and WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Okay, welcome back everyone to Big Data SV. Big Data Silicon Valley, that's the hashtag, Big Data SV. Go to crowdchat.net slash Big Data SV to join the conversation. This is theCUBE, we're live in Silicon Valley covering all the trends in big data, all the news at the Strata Conference behind us across the street at the Santa Clara Convention Center. We're live at the Hilton in Santa Clara. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle and founder of CrowdChat. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And we're going to go in and dive into all the news and analysis here at the Strata Conference and also here at uh, Big Data SV. Um, we have Jeff Kelly as well joining us, and we'll be uh, we'll be drilling down. So, um, Dave, want to get I want to get in touch with your thoughts here because one of the things that's interesting is uh, all the big data trends. So, I think John, as we talked about yesterday, we're definitely seeing a lot of focus on partnerships. People trying to expand the market market. People trying to essentially broaden their channel of distribution and hone their go-to-market strategies. We're not seeing as much as we have in previous big data events around you know, technology innovations, although of course we, we haven't had Arun Murthy on yet. <laughs> if and when he comes on, we'll talk about uh, you know, geeking out. Other than that, having said that, the one exception is WinDisco. We see WinDisco when bringing its uh, active, active, non-stop capability to HBase. So that's a good example, and there, and, and there are others, but generally speaking, this is a show about partnerships, distribution, and I think it underscores where we are in big data. The thing that we were talking about yesterday, Dave, the kind of the segmentation of the market, we heard from Cloudera kind of with their positioning. Um, Alan laying out the positioning, and you know, Cloudera's on the straight and narrow with the positioning, enterprise data hubs, classic product map product positioning, entry level, mid range, flagship product, um, trying to simplify it, clearly moving away from Hortonworks' model of button down straight, open source support, Cloudera is more going the Oracle model, big enterprise competing with IBM, big pond efficient, a lot of competition, and you have kind of MapR charging the license fee. So again, horses for courses, or swim lanes as they say. So you're seeing the competition. Jeff, what do you think about those moves? Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty, you know, they're different uh, approaches to this market. Um, you know, when you look at all three, what they have in common um, is the, I think the end goal is similar amongst the three Hadoop players. <clears throat> that is providing uh, a full-fledged big data platform. Uh, the difference is, of course, in the execution, where, as you said, Cloudera is taking more of the Oracle approach, where uh, they want to build the enterprise data hub, as they call it, uh, with the spokes. Uh, emanating from that, and all of that uh, focused on their their products and solutions. Uh, Hortonworks, by contrast, open source, focused strictly on the Hadoop layer, uh, and, and partnering with companies like Teradata, Microsoft, and others to provide kind of the other capabilities you need to, to build a, a true big data platform. MapR, um, you know, they've uh, got a similar approach, I would say, probably to, uh, more similar to Cloudera but a little bit more open. They've got, uh, you know, they'll, they'll actually let you run Impala, which is, you know, Cloudera's product on top of MapR's distribution. Um, so they're not quite as dogmatic about that, but um, ultimately the end goal is, of course, to make Hadoop uh, really a, a foundational technology and a big data platform and enable uh, multiple types of applications on the, on the, on let's, the platform. Let's get into some of the news and some of the analysis. Um, so WAN Disco, we talked about non-stop HBase. We already covered that yesterday. Uh, Vertica and MapR strike the strategic partnership. That's interesting, you're mm -hmm. seeing uh, MapR and Vertica aligning. We talked. To, I talked to the CEO John Schroeder last night uh, over over cocktails at their party. Um, great news. He was presented at the Goldman Sachs investment meetings. The, the, the Wall Street loves MapR's model. Good old license revenue. Nothing wrong with that. Very good predicted business model. Open source support. Will there be a red hat for Hadoop? As Pat Gelsinger was uh, speculating. We'll see. So that's interesting. So what's your take on the Vertica MapR news? Uh, I think it was a good move for both companies. Um, you know, as I said, MapR is taking the approach where they're they're a little bit more, they're not as dogmatic when you, when you talk about a little bit above the Hadoop stack um, when it comes to the SQL on Hadoop. You know, they've got their own, uh, they, well, they've thrown their uh, backing behind Apache Drill, um, but they'll also support Impala. Uh, they'll uh, support something like Presto, which came out of Facebook. Now they've got Vertica uh, involved in the, or, or you can just deploy Vertica on the same cluster, makes it a little bit easier to manage. 
Um, and it gives you gives them a you know an opening into that uh, user base. And the other interesting thing around is is they can leverage um, Vertica's uh, developer contacts to kind of help build out some more applications on MapArt. And obviously, the, st the strategic news. Obviously, one of the big news of the show is Horton works with Red Hat, deepening their mm -hmm. relationship and their relationship with Microsoft, as on the cube yesterday, evident with with the GM of SQL division. I mean. Come on, let's, Hortonworks got two big players there. Are they locking up that market? Well, look at, I mean, there's, what, two big, uh, you know, operating systems, Linux and Windows, and they've got, uh, they've got both of them on board. So, uh, great move, makes a lot of sense. I mean, Red Hat is really one of the unsung uh, beneficiaries of the big data movement. I mean, so you're seeing the swim the lanes develop, for these, the yeah. so-called swim lanes. You got Hortonworks trying to be underlying HTP platform, you got Linux, and you got Microsoft mm -hmm. with OS vendors, Cloudera going in to have outcome-based conversations very much like IBM well, what and I, MapR doing their, their thing. What I like about Cloudera, first of all, I think it's a great move to simplify the pricing, and uh, the, the, the uh, three basic layers, small, medium, and large, anytime you can reduce confusion in this market, uh, that's good for customers, so that's a good move. Um, and I, you know, having talked to Alan, uh, about their, their approach and some of the feedback they're getting, when you can up-level the conversation from the technology to the business outcome, that's when this market's really going to start to take off, and that's what this enables them to do. So, you know, it's, it's hard to pick a winner. Um, as you've said before, John, there's, there's a lot of uh, beachhead here, so there doesn't have to be just one winner and two losers. I mean, there's, there's a lot of room in this market, as we've, we've sized it. It's going to be a pretty big market, 50 billion by 2017. Some so. other news. Um, obviously, Triseda, friend of the cube, Abi Metis company, um, has some discovery capability on Spark, real-time networking, the data factories. Those guys doing some amazing work. Uh, and Datastax announcing a network partner program with Accenture, Google, Plow, uh, Google Cloud Platform, and others. Uh, let's start with Triseda, and let's then talk about Datastax. Well, Tr Triseda, you know, we've been following for years now with uh, Avi Mehta, one of the, the Cube rock stars coming on, and always some great thought leadership from, from Avi. And uh, what's, you know, what I like about them is they're focused on the application. They're focused on solutions, uh, not necessarily the, the underlying kind of guts of the, of the platform. And they're benefiting from all the work that's been put into Hadoop as a platform leading up to this. So now they, they can go into big banks and big retailers who have a Hadoop cluster uh, or two already just uh, deployed, you know, talking about how are we going to really make use of all this data, Abi and his team can come in and say, well, we've got these applications we've built out, and they tell a great story about monetizing data. Um, so good, good for them, looking for big things for them. Data Stacks, obviously, without a CMO right now, as a company, obviously a great company. We know them and follow them. You know, Billy Bosworth, great CEO. It comes from a great pedigree background, understands the business. Cassandra, quietly mopping up the high end of the market. Um, certainly they got traction. Um, I know they just hired a, a new PR comms person, uh, Lisa Green, who uh, came from HP. Um, they've also added some other talent. They're hiring some great people. I know they just hired a great general counsel, a friend of mine, um, but no CMO. Big, big hole to fill there. They got to get that marketing up. I mean, what's your take on data stacks as a company and obviously the challenge of having no marketing for uh, well, they had a they had a good year last year. They uh, they really their revenue started to really pick up. They're starting to gain some traction. Of course, they're competing with companies like MongoDB, who's you know kind of the darling of the developer set. But uh, Cassandra and Datastax have a good reputation. I like the partnership moves, uh, as we talked about uh, a little bit today. You know, in 2014, I expect to see a lot more partnership and integration announcements rather than technology features and new 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 products. Um, and so the key really is for a lot of these startups to start expanding, and how do you do that? You do that through partnerships with SIs and bars, and that's really, uh, this is really the year where we're going to see some real revenue take off, and that's one way to go about doing it, so good moves from Datastax. Uh, interesting, uh, so continuing the news, we've got some time left here. Um, one surprising uh, company that I was kind of pleasantly surprised, was new, new on my radar in terms of uh, looking under the hood, is Splice Machine. Mm. Raised $15 million in a Series B, real-time data applications. We had Monty on here in the cube yesterday. Very impressive entrepreneur. Um, they're doing some interesting things, and that is a really, I like this, I like this startup. I like him, I like what they're doing. I know some folks that have gone to work there. Um, they're just quietly, kind of silent running, doing, doing their business, staying to their knitting. $15 million, not a lot of money on a Series B. I like his philosophy as an entrepreneur, very capital efficient on the front end, not taking over much, a lot of much cash. I like, his, I like his style, I like the opportunity. What do you think? He's an impressive guy. Um, Monty's got some interesting, uh, interesting opinions, <laughs> and, uh, but I like the company, I like the approach. You know, they're really going for, you know, he's, he, he's got a good um, 
vision in that you know he understands that his best customers are going to be business people that have a have a pro, have a, a, a significant problem a pain that they need to be that needs to be uh, alleviated so they they're going in when applications you know new applications that can't scale on Oracle or MySQL and they're going in and and uh, mopping up some of those those accounts and you know they have uh, I said last night uh, it is a, a little bit of a challenge to build a business on what is what could be called just a feature SQL on Hadoop. That said, if you're solving business problems, you know yeah. there's always a, there's always room in the market for it's, a company like that. People need to learn how to ride a bicycle in, in the new world, and if they can make those SQL guys do it, that's a good deal. All right, quickly, Alpine uh, Data Labs. I see Bruno, a lot of flair, great guy, friend of the cube. Um, if, you, if you you know put all that flair aside, they have some interesting stuff. X Greenplum, your mm -hmm. take on Alpine. Well, uh, the, I noticed they released uh, a product called Chorus uh, a couple of days ago, which kind of rang a bell, and I realized that's uh, from doing a little research. That's actually the, the Green Plum uh, product, Chorus, that was released a few about a year ago. So that's an that's an interesting play. Um, we'll have them on tomorrow. I mean, interesting to learn more. Um, you know, they're doing some interesting things with kind of the uh, data transformation and the uh, advanced analytics. So we'll see. So let's talk about Revolution Analytics. They have an, uh, a Revolution uh, Now marketplace or service on AWS Marketplace, mm -hmm. um, which brings two questions. One, that announcement, but also the role of Amazon. We haven't heard a lot about it. We heard uh, InfiniDB had a little Amazon action going on there, so a little cloud. You know, que two questions, that deal and other news around that, and Amazon. Is it, uh, what's going on with Amazon to show here? Well, I haven't heard a lot about Amazon at this show, and I think, I think the reality is it's still very early for uh, big data on uh, in the cloud, whether it's Amazon or uh, Savas, now CenturyLink, or whatever the case might be. Those, those are ramping up. So a lot of the big data workloads that we do see on AWS right now are kind of those test and dev situations where people will kind of start tinkering with uh, new applications they might be building on Hadoop or uh, some of the other big data capabilities that AWS offers. And then uh, the next step is, well, what do they do? Do they move to production workloads? Do they bring that back in-house, or do they uh, expand that in AWS? And that remains to be seen. Uh, which way that's going to go. Um, as for Revolution, uh, you know, R very popular, obviously, with the data science crowd. Uh, the challenge with R is it's not a, it wasn't designed really as a big data solution. It's not as scalable. So Revolution's done a lot of work to make R scalable, um, being able to deploy that on uh, in Hadoop environments. Uh, so it'll be interesting to talk to hopefully some, some end users as we, um, you know, at the show and other places to hear if uh, that's really, uh, really working, you know, it's, it's getting some credibility in the marketplace. Overall, your take on Strata Conference, I mean, my take is O'Reilly does a great job with these conferences. They try to make it a geeky conference, kind of a festival, but they cannot escape the fact that, you know, a lot more sponsors, a lot more startups, they're making a lot of money, no doubt about it, God, God bless them. But the reality is, can they handle the tsunami of business interests, because what you know, normally the Strata Conference has been de designed for their core community of developers, machine learning. They have a lot of great talks, uh, but the demand and the interest, guys, on business value, this is going absolutely mainstream. More suits than hoodies, as we heard yesterday. What's your take? Uh, well, it's a challenge. Uh, you know, the, the hoodies don't always take kindly to the to the suits kind of invading what was their territory at a show like Strata. And the, the, the challenge for O'Reilly, of course, is to make the show relevant for both communities. Uh, you know, that's that's a challenge that's going to continue to become even more challenging over the next few years as this really goes mainstream. So, you know, from what I heard, uh, you know, there's so-so marks on the data science track yesterday at O'Reilly. Um, we'll see. I mean, it's it's a challenge. There's a lot of room in this market, though. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe they break it out, do a couple different conferences. Dave and I were talking this morning about valuations. Obviously, the market's high. Looking at the growth opportunities, significant uh, big data marketplace. Your report, right on track to that fifty billion dollar market. A lot of growth potential. This thing is busting out at the seams. Uh, Dave, valuations are obviously high. Expectations are high. I think you're going to start to see people drop out, tap out. You're going to start to see when the valuations and the expectations are this high, and the customers are voting with their wallet now with budget, you're going to start seeing separation. Well, the big question I have is, I mean, you saw what Actian did putting together you know, companies like Pervasive and others and you know, taking columnar database technology and bringing it together to build a platform. Um, my question is, what are some of these large companies going to do? Is, is IBM's portfolio built out? I mean, IBM's got all the piece parts, um, you know, but still very services driven. What about Oracle? Uh, you know, we often talk about, you know, will Oracle buy Cloudera? Who's going to buy Hortonworks? Are these guys acquisition proof? That to me is the big question. Unlike, as we were talking about earlier, John, unlike the social media space where it was really pure plays, new companies, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, et cetera, um, you've got 
in Jeff's report, you're seeing the whales predominate. I think the first, Jeff, five or six companies in your market share lead are, are big, giant, multi-billion dollar firms. So what do you think? Do you think they will acquire and these pure plays will disappear or will one or two of them or maybe three or four or five emerge as large, well-funded, maybe you know, billion dollar companies with uh, multi-billion dollar IPOs, not unlike what we've seen with Splunk and Tableau and ServiceNow and, mm -hmm. and Workday in, in cloud. I think you'll see a couple, a couple to three or four of these uh, companies that are these pure plays that are uh, in the Hadoop market and the kind of the adjacent um, analytics market uh, will survive and thrive, I think, as independent companies. But you're going to see a lot of acquisitions, and you're going to see a lot of, unfortunately, for some of these startups, a lot are going to go out of business. So Wait, really, I mean, I mean, take a look at the Hadoop uh, distro companies, the big three, big uh, three: Cloudera, HortonWorks, and, and MapR. What what would it take? I mean, you know, Cloudera is working toward, toward an IPO. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean. You've got to have at least a billion dollar uh, valuation, John, right, to do an IPO. I mean, if these little flash vendors are getting well, you know, Twitter filed the confidential <laughs> minus uh, under a billion, you can file IPO. Uh, we've seen that in the past. Um, you know, I think about IPO is kind of an end game. I think the liquidity equation from the VCs are driving it, but ultimately you're seeing the, the fact is these companies are valued very, very high. I personally am surprised by the M&A market not being as frothy. We talked about that yesterday. Yeah. The M&A market should be on fire. I'm expecting to see huge kind of mid-range acquisitions where the guys who are out of touch on the valuation side, like a Cloudera, like a Hortonworks, they're literally untouchable unless you're talking in the Bs, right? So, so you know, significant numbers. You might see someone kind of tuck up there. So I think the 300 to $700 million range is a beautiful number, what we're seeing in the data and what we're hearing on the street, Dave. I think that's the action. If you're a startup and you don't think you're going to make it, start getting dressed up for that market because I think it's going to be hot. So who should buy whom, Jeff Kelly? <laughs> now you said you're predicting some acquisitions will happen and, and you know, they're, they're, they're rich for short revenue. I mean, not buying them for revenue, right? Obviously right. buying them for strategic advantage. Well, who should I, buy whom? Well, when you look at um, what I think you'll probably see, more likely than an acquisition of maybe a, a Cloudera, a Hortonworks, or a MapR, is you might see um, some of the larger vendors pick up some of the more strategic um, or I should say some of the more tactical plays in something like SQL and Hadoop, or uh, some of the more, some of the companies that are focused more on a feature rather than a platform, where they where these companies can fill in uh, some gaps in their portfolio. Um, you know, IBM probably actually not one of the companies likely to, to make a big acquisition because, as you said, they've got all the pieces. Their their struggle is to, to kind of integrate it together. But I look at a company like Actian as kind of the model. They they pulled together in a very deliberate way. Uh, pervasive and Park Cell and some other companies before that to build out their platform play. So, uh, you know, I think we'll see some more acquisitions. I, I wouldn't be shocked if we saw maybe somebody like Pivotal make a couple of uh, tuck-in acquisitions. Um, I think Oracle may make, uh, probably needs to make a few acquisitions in this space to really, um, if nothing else, try to buy some credibility in the big data space. Um, so we'll see. It's, it's going to be interesting as this plays out because, John, as you said, the, the valuations are so high in some cases that it makes it a challenge. Uh, for these companies to uh, be acquired. Okay, that's the news break here. We try to knock down some news. Uh, a lot of other news going on in the world. Obviously, uh, cloud, mobile, and social at the top of the at uh, top of the heap. You're talking about Google. You're talking about the big players, Microsoft. Huge, huge shifts happening. Tectonic shifts. The sea changes happening. The transformation, whatever you want to call it. Big data will be part of the fabric of change, enabling new applications, powering some of the new engines under the hood. This is super exciting. We love this as the Cube. It's our fifth season here at uh, Silicon Valley and, and East Coast and Boston area, SiliconANGLE, Wikibon. And we're excited to be here covering Strata Conference and Big Data in Silicon Valley. Hashtag is Big Data SV. Go to the hashtag Big Data SV. Go to crowdchat.net slash big data SV and be part of the conversation and check out our new CrowdChat application. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>